Wouldn't it be great if you could put together a summit, build your mailing list a little bit, really target it, and better understand how to create income from that mailing list. My name is Michelle Pava, and along with being a psychotherapist, I'm also a neuromarketing strategist, and I'm going to teach you how to put together your own summit for really less than $50. So here we go. Let's talk about the number one thing that you need to know before you even create a summit. Your tagline, all of that is somewhat important, but it's not the main thing. Your color scheme, not that big of a deal. So the graphics are important, but they're not that important. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you know the target market, it's more about who you are and your experts have a trust level with their clients or their communities. So for instance, if you have an automotive online store, it doesn't really matter if it's hot pink, if it's blue, if it's purple, if your face is on it, if your face is not on it, it's not going to matter that much as long as your experts have a nice, genuine trustworthy relationship with their communities because it's really about that relationship not so much what your website looks like for your summit so number one you don't have to use a certain template okay and the number two thing actually this is the number number three thing so number one you don't need to worry about the graphics as much number two you don't need a certain template and number three you definitely don't need to spend a lot of money so i'm going to first talk to you about what you should be looking at when you are creating a summit. And I'm going to teach you how to do it right now so that you can do it in a way that is economical and that you don't have to kill yourself over it. It can be really time consuming, really exhausting, and I'm going to tell you what works and what doesn't work. So number one, what you want to be looking for is you need to have a clear idea on what you're going to sell after the summit. So the main part of a summit is not the summit. The main part of a summit is the program that you have right after. The program that you have right after should be something that's three videos or a four week course. It should be something very small, very bite sized and very economical. Because after the summit, you need to create a community and you need to build trust. And just doing things that are higher ticket item are not going to do that. So a lot of people, a big mistake that they make is they get this big list and they say, oh, this is a great targeted list. I'm going to start to sell my membership program or I'm going to sell my more uh, midline course. You really wanna keep the finance of the first thing that you sell between $29 and $47 in that range because you're just giving them a taste of working with you. It's not really about making a lot of money. Of course, when you have 5,000, 6,000 people on your mailing list, it's very possible that you're going to make a great chunk. However, you can make a good, good income off of 100 people that are very targeted. And here's why it's important to not think about how many people are on the list initially if you're starting out. It's very easy to get a wide range of people and build a very big list, okay? At one point, I had over 15,000 people on my list, and the list was actually a lot of people who were in nutrition, and that really wasn't connecting with what I was offering. So was it a giant list? Absolutely. But was it a list that was positive for me? Not really. Because what I was offering, these were not my exact target. So if you don't actually know exactly who you're marketing to and exactly what you're going to offer them, you really can't put together a summit. So your tagline and all of that doesn't really matter right now because you need to have that first piece in place. So once you have that, and once you know what you're going to sell, for instance, something that I sold was a program that was a four week program on turning the grit in your life into pearls. A four week program that was geared towards women and it was geared towards women who were 35 and up who had some kind of abuse in their past. It was very targeted, okay? So it wasn't meant for everyone. So you want to have something that is more focused. It's okay to not cast that wide net. It's okay to really know what you want and what you love to do, what you love to teach, who you love to work with. So I want you to think about that. Now, the next thing that you're going to look at is you have that in place, so you are going to develop your program. It doesn't have to be four weeks. If you wanna do something that's a three session 
course, you could do that, or three videos, you could do that. So for $27, you're going to get three videos or three calls that are uh, masterminds or whatever it is that you're doing. So you could do that. Now, after you have that aspect of it, what I want you to think about is, okay, now I know who exactly I'm going to be working with and what I'm offering. So your summit should be built upon that. So whatever the branding is of your program, your summit should look like. It shouldn't just be any color. It shouldn't just be what the hot colors are. Like it shouldn't just be um, green because you are in natural health or green and orange or whatever. You need to look at exactly what your program is and that's what your summit should look like because you need to build the familiarity and you want the colors to kind of go together for that. So you're branding yourself when you're branding your summit but you're not really branding you. You already are a brand if you're an individual. People already have an idea of who you are. So you're really you're really building and branding your course, not your summit and not you. And that's a big mistake I see a lot of people doing. So after you have that, now you need to build the course and you think you need to hire someone to do this. And more than likely, if you go into their background, you might find that they don't really have a marketing background. Maybe they worked at Costco or maybe they uh, worked in real estate and they don't really have an online background in doing this. And before you even say it, I'm not selling myself here to do this. I do not do summits, but I'm here to teach you for free how to do it yourself. So you want to really be sure that whoever you're working with, if they are actually a VA, they're a VA and that's great and you can hire them as a VA, but they should not be the person dictating what your summit should look like. You're the person who's the professional, you're the expert, and your VA should not be telling you what colors to use or what kind of swipe copy to use because it's not your words. So when you have your program and when you're looking at what your summit should look like, I'm gonna tell you, it's so easy, you're gonna love this. All you have to do, now I use Thinkific, you can use anyone, but I highly suggest Thinkific because they will actually even work with you. So Thinkific is, you can actually do the free version of Thinkific. You can do the paid versions. I do the uppermost echelon of what they offer because I want it to offer affiliates and coupons and things like that. So that's $99 a month, but you don't have to do that. I said you could do this for less than $50 and I mean it. You can use the free Thinkific and that could be where you build your actual summit for free. So you will need a mailing list system. And the reason why I say up to $50 is because once you get everyone signed up, you're going to start to see that your mailing list is going to start to cost you money. So I do suggest if you're going to invest some money and you only have $50, you need to invest it in your mailing list. You need to make sure you have money for that because it could easily go up to $300 a month if you are casting a really wide net and those people aren't gonna really be buying from you, so you're not going to have a return on investment. You need to have a return on investment. You want signups, but you want these signups to be return on investment. So you don't wanna just have, if you're doing something in natural wellness, um, natural health, wellness, Reiki, uh, organic food, you don't wanna have on your summit a Reiki healer, a business coach, um, three transformational coaches. You don't wanna have, um, you know, you don't want to cast it so wide. Now, if you're working with trauma, you can do that, but the topics of each person have to do with how they overcame something. So you can actually have a variety of people, but the topic has to be really, really niche. However, the average person who, for instance, is looking at a psychotherapist is not always going to be looking for Reiki healing. Or if you're looking more at a therapeutic place, they're not going to always be looking at a transformational coach. So you have to know who you are marketing to. You already have to maybe work with people, even if you only have worked with one or two people, you have to have an idea of what they're really looking for and what kind of work that they're looking for. If you have an online community, you have to take note and survey your already existing online community. I'm not a fan of anyone just getting a big mailing list and sending a survey out and just saying, okay, I'm gonna just basically throw this out and see what sticks and that's what I'm going to offer. Because that means you're not authentic and it really means that you're not clear on who you are and what you're offering. It means that you're really just looking to make money from a group of people and then do another summit and do the same thing. That's really not good business. It's actually a lot of effort for very little return on investment, even if you think that return on investment is 
a few thousand dollars or more, it's not really good, even if you're doing it really economically and more uh, return on investment like I'm going to teach you. So you need to know who you're working with. You need to survey those people that you already work with or who are in your community. Now the next area that I want you to think about is the writing and the scripting. So when you make, and I'm going to teach you how to do this, when you actually make your front page um, on your Thinkific site, you're going to see that there's a banner area. You don't even have to put a banner up. It's, it's already existing with a color. You can go in and change the branding and the colors and you can just put your title and your tagline up. So the title should be nice and catchy, but not cutesy, okay? So you want to be uh, exuberant and happy about what you're doing, but you don't wanna be so cutesy that you're not gonna be taken seriously, okay? You wanna be professional. You want to really focus on, again, who you're speaking to. So if you are someone who is working in natural health in any way, shape, or form, you don't want to be really maybe in a suit. Maybe you do. Whatever you are naturally is how you want to show up. And whoever you're speaking to, you want to speak to them, okay? So I don't want you to stress out about that part because it's just you. You don't have to be anything. And sometimes coaches or summit people, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, will tell you to be a certain way and use a certain type of scripting and they will even teach public speaking even if they've never done public speaking. Maybe their only public speaking that they've ever actually done has been Facebook Live, you know? And do you really want to take public speaking advice from someone who maybe their biggest public speaking was Facebook Live or managing a warehouse. You know, you don't want that. So you want to look at Toastmasters. You want to look at people who have done public speaking. And if you have already done public speaking or if you worked in journalism and so forth like I have, you already know how to handle a crowd or how to handle yourself online with interviews. You don't need anyone to tell you how to do that, okay? so. It's almost like too many cooks in the kitchen. So I'm really simplifying this for you. And the main thing I want is for you to trust yourself because you can do this. So I want you to, in the interim, you're going to look at your tagline and your, so your title could be something like, um, if you're a chef or a organic chef, it could be healthy food now or feed your family today on a budget or whatever. Your tagline would be something a little bit longer. Um, it might even be bullet points. So maybe it is economical meals, healthy, gluten-free, or a sentence, gluten-free, healthy meals that are economical for your family, okay? And you gather your professionals. Now here's where it's a little different. Um, you're probably used to, um, it being told that you should have, you know, 20, 21, 24 people on your summit. And for some areas, having a lot is good. So for some different niches, and this is why you need someone who understands the different niches, every niche has kind of a magic number of what is right. So the average person who is in business and very successful is going to want to go to a conference. They're not going to always want to be in a summit. So if they are looking at a summit, they want something that's more of a video summit. So if you're in business, you may not even need to do Thinkific, or maybe you can. But what you do is you host everything over on Vimeo and you lock it down. Okay. Now I didn't do that. I just did Facebook because I, or excuse me, not Facebook of uh, YouTube because I knew that I wanted people to always be able to access the interviews for the most part. But if you're in a business, you can actually put your videos over on Vimeo and keep them private, or you can make them uh, free, or you could put them at a cost, or you can make them public. You can do a lot over on Vimeo. You can actually create your entire summit by just having a mailing list and accessing Vimeo. You could give every single expert video a password and what happens is you send your, your experts the links, people sign up to your mailing list, and when it's time to release your summit, you actually say, okay, today I have Chef so-and-so and to access their interview, the password is this, and you give them a password, green or juice, whatever. So what you can do also is that interview would be live, 
then for 24 hours or for seven days. You could do this with all of your interviews. And then when you need to shut it down, all you have to do is go back and change those passwords. So that means the people that didn't buy them will not have access to them. The people that buy them, you could just make copies and give them a different password, or you could give them the new password, okay? So you can do all of this just through Vimeo, but also if you are using Thinkific, this is fantastic because you have affiliates. So you give all of your experts an affiliate link, you can give coupons out, you can actually host your course also on Thinkific, you can upsell, so what you can do is you can have your, and this is what I did, I used Thinkific. So I had Thinkific and I was able to give all of my experts an affiliate link so I knew who was actually promoting the summit and who wasn't. And I also knew who had an active, trustworthy community if I saw them actually promoting. And I'm gonna get into that as well in a minute. And I know that I glazed over how many people to have in your summit. So if you're in a business summit, you can actually have more people, but they have to all be specialists in their field and they have to be recognized. So you want someone who's more recognized and specialist, but you don't want people that are overlapping. So you don't want three different ways to look at social networking. You want one person who is definitely an expert and that everyone respects. You want one person for managing content. You want one person for writing content. You, do you see what I'm saying? You want experts. If you're looking at more of wellness that is not actually as analytical, because business is going to be more analytical, analytical excuse me, and return on investment, and there's going to be things that work and things that don't work. So you want experts and you want it very final. If you're doing more yoga, wellness, anything like that, you're going to look at more so um, the idea that you're going to have more of different theories, okay? So you can have three different people who are, uh, maybe yin yoga is their thing, maybe someone else is doing power yoga, maybe someone else is doing aerial yoga, you know, the benefits of that. Or one person is all about the paleo diet, one person is all about vegetarian, one person is all about the book Wheat Belly, okay? So you want to look at do you have an audience that wants a lot of different ideas and they're okay with more people? Or do you have an audience that doesn't have time and they want facts? You know who you're marketing to and you know who you're talking to. The other area that is important is that you don't want to have someone, and this is where it really gets messy. There are people that love to do summits and you know what, they're fun. They can be really fun. But if you see someone who's doing a lot of summits, it means they have a lot of time as well. And if they're not being paid or featured as the number one expert, it means that they're trying to build their mailing list up, which is totally fine, that really is. However, people that are very hungry for a big mailing list hop on every single summit that's available. And what that means is they are marketing to their community a lot. And what that means is if you have somebody who says, I have 300 people on my Facebook page and I'm really close with them, and then you have someone else who has 10,000 people on their Facebook page and they have a mailing list and they have a Facebook group, but they're marketing to these people so much, those people are pretty much being drowned out. So you actually will get more of a return on investment for you, maybe on the person that has less people who are more reactive and engaged, okay? So you have to look at that too. So in, in the online world, popular these days, anyone could be popular with a certain amount of effort, but return on investment is very different. So there's a lot of popular people out there that just sort of, you know, uh, and, and there's popular people that are really getting a great return on investment too, I should mention that. But there are also people that are just focused on building their communities and they're marketing so much to their communities, and their communities are maybe receptive to them, maybe, but if they're super receptive to them, and there's a trust with them, they may not want to leave and work with you. So you need to have that balance of receptive community, trust, and also who's out there that is really wanting to be a guest, what are the reasons? You know, what, what is the actual reason that someone would guest with you? Now, I'm really against swipe copy, and swipe copy is a scripted copy. It's usually very, very um, cutesy. Like, hey girl, are you interested in being a badass business person? Well, I have great news for you. Wiggle up and 
put on your seatbelt and here we go. Now, for some people that's great, but for the average professional who reads that, it's like delete, not doing it, okay? So you need to get more serious if you are focusing on a very serious topic or a very serious niche, okay? If you have to be authentic to you, but at the same time, you don't want to offend people, you know? So it, I personally drop the F-bomb every now and then, and I will offend people, but I'm not in a place where I'm actually searching to build a giant mailing list. So when I do a summit, it's usually because I just want to get a message out or I'm changing my focus a little bit and I'm testing it out with creating a summit. So if you're in it just to build a list, you need to really look at, again, who are you working with, who do you want to work with, and what do you have to offer at the end to give them. If you're not, say, for instance, if you're not dropping the F-bomb in this in this program over here or calling people a badass here, then don't do it on your summit because you're going to send mixed signals, okay? And you don't want people on your summit that are going to be doing that. So they have to be more in alignment with you. Um, the other area that I want you to think about is that it's really easy if you're on Thinkific to put together a summit because even with their free program, you have chapters and course, or, or within the chapter, you have the ability to put in uh, text. And within the text, actually, you can actually put in a video. So even though it says text, you can put in video, which is a link. You can also do just MP4s if you want, or MP3s. You can do a lot of things. You can add quizzes, you can do bonus chapters. So every chapter can actually be a day and you can customize all of this even on the free program. So it's very, very easy to do and it costs zero to do that. You don't need Optimize Press, not that they're not great, but you don't need Optimize Press. You don't need a VA to create anything. Um, if you do want graphics, you can do Canva for absolutely, again, zero. So you can go over to canva.com and you can create your own your own stuff. So all you have to do is you get a Facebook, you go through their options and you're gonna see Facebook posts, okay? Because that's the right size that you're gonna want your experts to promote. You see Facebook, uh, the, the Facebook square basically, and you're going to drag, you're gonna go over to the top where there's a search and you're gonna put circle frame and you're going to see all different types of frames that are in a circle. You put the circle frame in that square you customize it, have fun with it, make it the same color scheme as the course that you're going to be promoting, and then you just drag the pictures of your experts into that square, so all, or into the circle, which is in the square. So that's all you have to do. It's super easy to do, and you can customize it any way that you want. So what I did was I just made a row, and I would do four at a time. So four circles at a time, four experts at a time. Now my last summit was really big. Um, not a good idea to do anything big like that. You want to keep, most summits are more successful with five to seven people. And when I say this, I know that there's definitely people that are out of the box who did, you know, 80 some, 80 experts and they made a lot of money. And I know you could totally do that. And it could be really good for you, but you have to look at the time that you have and you have to interview these people. So whether or not you have a VA or someone who's doing your summit for you, you're still the one ultimately that has to brand and you're the one that has to be asking the questions. You're the one with the expert. So you need to be present. So I did over 30 interviews in a month and it was too much. It, my work suffered, my health suffered, my business actually suffered because who needs 30 experts talking about shame, right? So it wasn't actually as positive towards the end for some of the people that were towards the end. Um, and some of the people in the very beginning, they were more focused maybe on manifesting or on love. And really my summit was more focused on, on shame and sexual assault and getting through some tough areas in your life. So that's good um, that I had them because it reached out to their communities and I can now also use them as a network and refer people to them because I don't do manifesting and, and all of that. So that's great. But it's also very important to understand that you only want five to seven people because you only really want to grow your business a little at a time. It's really not a good idea to explode your business and make mistakes if you're new. Like I've been in business for 30 years, but if you're newer into coaching, 
you are going to see stars and dollar signs when people say a big list and you're going to make so much money and no one's really telling you the reality of you have to work your butt off and you really should do a lot of one-on-one -on -one before you even do a summit really know who you're working with and who's responding and know who is spending the most money with you who sees value in you and that's who you're going to market to okay so you can have the most beautiful website and the most beautiful tagline and and all of that and it doesn't really mean your return on investment is going to be there so that's why i'm saying don't spend a lot of money you don't have to do that so for the price of your mailing list really and maybe if you do Vimeo, which is $9.99 a month, you could do MailChimp for free, and you can do Vimeo. You could do it for free. I actually think that they do have a password protection on Vimeo free. If they don't, it's like $9.99 a month. And Thinkific is free. So really, I said less than $50, but we're talking less than $10 realistically. Now, as your mailing list does grow, you might go up to $10.99, or you might go up to $20 or whatever it is. The more people you have on your mailing list, you're going to be spending money. So I actually clean my mailing list out a lot because, um, because it's just, when you have a big mailing list, you're spending a lot of money. We're talking three to four or $500 a month. As an individual, how many of those people are actually prospective clients? How many just kind of wandered onto your site or signed up because they wanted free stuff in a summit because most people that sign up to a summit really are looking for free things. They never really need to hire you because if you have 12 to 20 experts on your summit, they already have a wealth of information that can carry them for a good three to six months, right? So they, they're not hungry to sign up for it to anything. So you want to have five to seven people have it very targeted and here's what I suggest you do. Here is the best way to do this, okay? Take your five to seven people and you develop a course out of your summit and offer a certificate. Now, if you use Thinkific, you can, especially the, 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 the place where I am, the level that I am, I think it's $99 a month, you can offer a certificate, okay? I think you could do that at any level, but I'm not sure. And you can actually do it the way I have it is when they're done, it automatically will give them a certificate. But you can actually, for free, just create a PDF and then just go ahead and put that in at the last day of your summit. And when they get down to the last day of the summit, when you release it, because Thinkific has time uh, drip. So when it drips out on the last day, that PDF is in there and they've got their certificate. Now their name won't be on it. What I have with Thinkific at the $99 uh, echelon is that you will their name whatever they signed up to the summit with that will be on their their certificate already so I think that's worth it for me to not have to worry about putting people's names on on certificates or telling them to put their name on it but you could totally just do that you know if you're new or you don't have a huge mailing list or your summit is going to be smaller and you really want to create one-on-one -on -one connection do a smaller summit, five to seven experts, and then you do those five to seven experts, and then people sign up. So they're going to, let me back up, okay? <laughs> I'm just going off here, I love it. I'm so excited about teaching you this. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Let's take it step by step. I've kind of given you the overview. The first thing I want you to do is go over to MailChimp, and I want you to sign up to MailChimp because it's free, okay? I want you to have your regular list in MailChimp, and then I want you to have your summit list in MailChimp. If you do anything where they are being, uh, if there's an upsell that in any way, shape or form have the next level. So for me, I had, I have all, I have a bunch of different lists in MailChimp, but I also have my regular summit and then I had the Ascension certificate. So that was my upsell. So if you wanted to have my summit plus a certificate, plus some of my programs, you actually paid $49 and you were able to get that. And at the end of it, you get a certificate, okay? So that's how I did it. This is all through Thinkific, okay? So I did that. And then, so you have your MailChimp. Now I used MailChimp because it was just easier for me to use MailChimp. I also have ActiveCampaign. So I use two different 
types of mailers. Don't ask me why, it's just a thing I do. So I have active campaign for one part of my business and I have MailChimp for another part of my business. I keep them very, very separate. So everybody who signed up to the summit was then through Zap, it's a Zapier, uh, I think that's how you say it, Zapier program. Um, they connect, uh, they're basically a bridge between a lot of different programs and you can actually Zap them together. Well, actually, wait, I take that back. I believe MailChimp is automatically connected to Thinkific. If I'm, I, I'm not really sure, guys. I know that at the level that I am, it is automatically connected, but I think free, you might have to use the Zap program. And that will say, okay, if you sign up to the free program, you go to the free list in MailChimp, or if you purchase the upsell, you go to this list in MailChimp. So I think you might need to do that in the free version, but I'm not sure, just check it out. Either way, here's the best thing, you don't even really technically need MailChimp because Thinkific has an email program within it. So you can actually say, okay, everyone that's here, I'm going to send out an email and they're going to get an email. So you technically, if you really want to save money, you don't even have you don't even have to use MailChimp or any mail program. You can just use Thinkific because Thinkific is sort of this beautiful space that has everything together, this beautiful container of making your life easy. So I did forget about that. So you can actually do all of this really through Thinkific. Now I'm telling you, this is easy to do. So all you do, let's just take away MailChimp for now. You sign up, you get a free Thinkific account and you can put together a course. Within that course, you can actually mail people if you need to, you can create visuals, you can add visuals in it, you can go to Canva, which is free, create your visuals, you also do not need to have a visual at all. You can actually have people, you could just say to people, hey, you know what, I am not, I don't have time to go to Canva and I'm not hiring someone to do it, so I'm not doing any graphics, but you know your community, why don't you just send out a picture of yourself and say, hey, here's the link, and you're gonna give them the link to your course, which is the summit, and you're gonna say, you know what, just use your favorite picture and here's what I would like you to write. And Usually what you want to do is just a quick little intro. Um, you would write it as if it were them saying it to their community. And you would say something like, hey everyone, I'm going to be on Michelle's Summit. It starts on this date. Sign up here. I'm really excited. My topic is and the summit's about. Boom. You do that. Really simple. You give it to them, but again, I'm not a real fan of swipe copy. Okay, Swipe copy is scripting. Someone else writes it for you and you sort of tweak it or keep it. It's usually not in your words, okay? And there are people that are going to tell you, no, 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 you write this way. This is how you grab people. No, how you grab people, your experts, is however they speak to their community. Because if you have like no one or 100 people or 5,000 people in your community between your uh, all of your social networks and your email, your experts are probably going to have a hell of a lot more. And trust me when I say, they know how to talk to their people. Do not be naive and think that you're going to teach them anything. So just let them talk to their people the way they do, okay? Now, sometimes experts really love to have that beautiful banner. It's not hard. Go over to Canva. They have templates already made up. All you do is you pop their picture in, you add some, some to their name and their title, and that's it. You don't really have to do a whole lot. You can even say to them, hey, um, this is the color scheme. Do you mind going to Canva and making your own up? Because I, I want you to make it to the best of what you think is, is attractive for your community. Because sometimes, you know, what you might create, you think is beautiful, but maybe they're like, ugh, this is like not really beautiful. So you can do whatever you want there. The pictures and all of that, the graphics are okay but they're not gonna make or break your summit, okay? What, what is going to make or break your summit is your energy level and knowing what your final course is and getting the right people for your summit. Now, why do you only want five or seven people again? Because you don't wanna saturate. You don't want people that are hopping on every summit. You don't want egomaniacs who just go on every single summit and take every speaking opportunity who are just out there and they're just hungry and desperate for attention. You don't want that. What you really want is someone who is loving what they do, loving to teach, and they are very picky about who they work with. That's what you want. 
You want to be in a place of esteem, not in a place of desperation, okay? So if you have five people that are very desperate and hop on every single summit, you're going to notice that they're going to have very low rates of people responding to your summit, okay? Because the people that they're talking to, they might have a big crowd, but it might not be a crowd that takes them seriously. Therefore, they're not going to take you seriously. You really have to position yourself with the right people. So based upon all of that, what do you do? Now you have to interview people. You might use Zoom. You could do that. You could use Instant Teleseminar. You could for $29, I think it is. It was $29 when I bought it. You can use Skype and you could use something called Call Recorder. It's $29 and it allows you to record all the time, like you own it then. And you can use your Skype, and you can just record side by side, you can make, what I did is I made my, my people the star, and I put myself really tiny in the corner. So in retrospect, I don't know that I would do that again, um, but I really liked the idea of making my expert the star. I think I should have, you know, made myself a little bit more out there, but whatever. So you could do whatever you want. So whatever you feel comfortable with, you can even do it in a way that you put yourself as the square at the bottom and you can even edit yourself out of it if you wanted to. So that's with Call Recorder and that is $29 at the last time I looked for ever. You know, it's $29 and you own it and it's on your Skype. So you really don't need to do anything much with that. Now that's $29, so now we're going up in that 50, right? But you can also use Zoom for free. So if you go to zoom.us, you could use Zoom for free. You can interview your expert. It has a, I think 30 minutes or 45 minutes, so you have to have a shorter time to, to have your interview, but that's what you wanna do. You wanna do something that's either with Zoom, if you're comfortable with Zoom, that's free or maybe $15 a month. So if you do all of your interviews in one month, you could buy it, do it, and be done with it. Um, but you're probably going to be using Zoom for some of your work anyway, maybe. So, or you could just go ahead and you can use um, the call recorder. So there we go. We have how to do technical, how do we can do that uh, with the interviews. You could also use, as I said, instant teleseminar, which is all by phone. So if you prefer to not do video, you could do phone. That's fine too. Video is, I think, much more advantageous. So get over whatever you have going on for that. Now, as a journalist and as someone who has done lots of on-air work, I'm gonna tell you how to interview your guests so that you get the most out of the interview and they look their best. Most people, when they interview, um, you know, I had someone who had no interviewing experience tell me, you wanna not talk a whole lot. You want them to talk. No! Absolutely not. You're, you're doing this as a business venture. You need to be present in that interview. Interviews that are back and forth, like if you look at really good talk show hosts, so go back to the Johnny Carson days or the Oprah days, they didn't just sit like a lump and let the other person take over. You need to be active. I'm not a real big fan of having everything pre-discussed and knowing what the questions are and all of that. You just want an idea of what the person's about. You need to know what your topic is and what you're going to sell at the end. So for me, what I was selling at the end, again, was my course on uh, helping someone to get through the grit and to find the, to make the grit the pearl, okay? So it was a healing path type of a program, okay? Four weeks. So I knew in those four weeks, I was going to be teaching more about shame and about sexual abuse and about relationships and about overcoming and what are the next steps, okay? So when I was holding my interviews, I don't care who it was. I don't care if I had a shoe salesman in front of me or a car salesman or a doctor or whoever, I was going to ask them, how do you handle shame? How do you handle this? How do you handle that? I was going to in some way weave into the conversation what I was going to eventually be teaching, okay? So I wanted to get their ideas on it because the way I was marketing is very, very niche. So it doesn't matter what they do, my target was very niche on how I was speaking to them. So therefore, if I knew in advance what I was going to be ending with in my summit, 
then I knew in that interim of having that conversation with them, I knew how to lead the interview because I had a goal in mind. So my goal wasn't just to be popular or uh, to have a great fun interview. It was also about my return on investment. So I took every single hour that I took in, in working with my, my experts and knowing how it was going to be resulted, the, the, the result at the end. Now, another way you can look at it is you could look at your summit as an actual, that is it. Maybe there's nothing at the end and that is it. You're going to be thinking about it in six months, but right now that's it. Well, you really need to be targeted because you should upsell at some point. You should always have an upsell. Anyone who says do a summit without an upsell is crazy. Always have an upsell. So you should always have something already ready. Um, I say make a summit something really important and make it a certificate. So if you're a Reiki healer, why not have a lot of different types of people on that can talk about healing in some way and they have a very different focus on each. So you have five or seven people and each one of them have a very different focus. And at the end, everyone gets an intro to Reiki certificate. How awesome is that to be able to say your name is on their certificate that they're going to hang up or put in their business or just look at and feel proud of, but your name's on it, your summit and your name. So you want to do that. You know what? You guys see me keep fixing the shirt. This is a style right now that I'm, I, I'm wearing it and I'm not getting it. Like the whole, like I'm still wearing my old lady bra and like, I'm not really getting this shirt. I'm probably never going to wear it again. Anyway. Um, so what I want you to now look at is, okay, now you've done the interviews, you put them in your Thinkific. By the way, Thinkific is like so easy. They have so many videos. They have a community. You could totally do this very, very easy. You, you've done your interviews. Your experts have marketed. You want your experts to put it out on social networking more than their email list. Email lists are good for them. They're not as good for the upsell of a, an actual summit. For summits, you want to get that buzz going. So you want it out on social networking where it's very, very visible. Why have it in a small email list when you could just put it out there to many, many more people? So you want your communities that, when I say your communities, your expert communities to all be able to see it and they want to see it a few times. And you want to maybe even ask your, your experts, hey, can you boost it for two bucks? Can you do that? Like, it's not a big deal. Uh, maybe you give them 50% of all of the income that comes in. I did that. Um, and again, you know the people who have really good connections with their communities and those that are struggling more. So you already know who, based upon not just the income, but based upon how they were networking, how they were promoting, you know the people that you want to work with in the future. You also will know the people that are a little bit on the fraud side. So there's going to be people that you will be interviewing or reaching out to that you start to go, hmm, are these people really in the know or are they riding the coattails of wanting to be something they're not right now? You don't want that. You want someone who's an expert, who is recognized, and they're awesome. So when you have your summit and when you have all of this in place and now you're ready for your summit to go live through Thinkific or through your mail system, go ahead and put an email out a little synopsis of what they're going to get that day. Are they getting one or two uh, people? Maybe it's only a three-day summit and there's two or three people every day in it. Or you're going to spread it out over seven days, whatever. So you're going to go ahead and do that. Always, always add a bonus. The people that have signed up to your summit are looking for some kind of a solution. So always give them something a little extra at the end. I think it's just nice to do. It's good business. It's good, good karma. It's good everything. So just give them a little something extra at the end. Once you have your mailing list, you can put them over to a group. I actually cleaned out my group recently. Um, I didn't invite everybody to the group. I only, only some people had the information to get into the group. And I was actually testing when I email people that are not in the group, and then when I email people that are in the group, which are the people that actually respond more. And oddly, the people that were in the group bought less, and the people that were not in the group bought more. So for me, I'm only keeping people in the group that have already been there. I'm not going to have anyone leave the group at this point, but I'm also not going to spend a lot of energy in the group. So that was just my experience. So I also want you to, what else do I want you to know? Um, hmm. 
I think that's about it. If you have any questions, definitely ask me um, below. That's really important. I will answer. You can email me. I do not do this for a living. Um, I do neuromarketing for a living and I do this for companies, but I don't do this for individuals because when I do it for companies, it's a, it's a whole different ball game because the, the brand is the company and usually it's people that are in their membership or uh, strong ties in their community and it's a different type of a program. Usually it's more of a conference than a summit. So if you want to get a little bit more information, just ask the question below and I will I will answer you. So I've done a lot of this for companies. I've done three summits myself. I've worked with other people. I've had really um, not very good luck with actually working with summit organizers because often what I'm finding is that they are very formula and it's all about making life easy for them. And they're charging, you know, two, three, five thousand dollars and some of their people are going to make a lot of money. But if you look at the people that are making a lot of money and successful, it's because these people were already successful coming into it. They already had their community and they're just building. And because they're successful, there's sort of this momentum. OK, so if you have someone, if you're you're looking at different people that have summits and you're hearing like so and so made one hundred thousand dollars, isn't that great by doing a summit with us? Well, when you research, that person already had a book and was already a top seller and already making a lot of money, okay? So it's like, well, yeah, it would be kind of silly if they didn't make a lot of money, right? So you have to take things with a grain of salt. You don't want to be a formula, you know? You don't want to be cookie cutter. You're an individual and your course that you're going to be offering at the end is your brand. You are your brand, but your summit is branded based on the course as well as you, okay? so. I hope I've helped you if you have any questions. Um, I'm sure I left a couple of things out, but it's really not overwhelming at all. I've actually taken more time explaining it than actually if you signed up to Thinkific and started the ball rolling. So anyway, that's it and have a great day.